Welcome, Spartans, to Podcast Evolved, your home for Halo. I am your host, Krista, and with me today is Aaron. Hi, guys. And Mr. Interruption, Oren. That's me. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> and this is a live show. We are live in our Discord server. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Yay! Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Today we are going to cover some news. So we have two cannon fodders to go through, and one of them has to do with one of my favorite species and their swords. So I like that. Mm-hmm. Hubba hubba. We also have the Xbox and Bethesda showcased date and time, and we're going to announce how we are going to cover those shows and maybe do a little bit of speculation along the way. And of course, we have our podcast Evolved Digest, so you know exactly what is going on in podcast evolved i guess our network our our kingdom what's going on in our empire yeah our empire oh i like that our empire of podcasts hear ye hear ye podcast evolved <laughs> would like to tell you what's going on all right so before we get started i have some housekeeping if you are new here to the show welcome Podcast Evolved is host to a variety of shows. This, the one you're listening to right now, is our main show where we talk about Halo news, Halo lore, and to you, the listeners. Our other shows are Mission Debrief, Halo Book Club, Builds with Blocks, and Halo Headlines. We have also started a partnership with HCS Pro Talk with Josh and Will to talk about some of the esports and multiplayer in the Halo universe. You can learn more about each of our shows on our awesome website, halopodcastevolved.com or just halopodcast.com. If you are already a, a fan of the show, we ask you to rate us and leave us a review. We greatly appreciate all feedback we receive from our listeners to improve the quality of our shows. I would like to take a moment to thank our amazing patrons for their continued support. Thank you, patrons! Yay! Patrons! Woo! Thank you guys so much. Our patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, unique swag, and access to our own soundtrack album featuring 18 songs. And of course, you may have heard some of the songs in the introduction to the podcast you're listening to right now. Head over to patreon.com slash halopodcastevolved to learn more. And finally, we encourage our listeners to support Audible, where they can enjoy the growing collection of Halo novels all in one place, along with thousands of other novels, guided wellness programs, and more. The URL, audibletrial.com slash podcastevolved, will bring you to information where you can learn more and start your free trial today. And that is my long-ass speech about all the shit we do. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! All right. Have we done anything Halo related in a world where a Halo game has not come out for a couple years? I have. Oh. Yes. So I I have some time off during the month of June and like the end of May here. So I've been able to participate in a game night. Unfortunately, it wasn't our own, but I plan to do that this coming game night i need to talk with uh nick about that but uh hcs pro talk are good partners over there will and josh they have their own game nights every friday night at about eight o'clock central and so i partook in that for about two hours and it was a lot of fun and uh, i miss playing halo with a lot of friends that's so uh, that sounds so sad or <laughs> I miss my friends. I miss my friends. Well, I remember, I remember just, you know, when a new Halo game comes out, like, you know, every, like your whole friends list is online like every other night. And so there's always someone to play Halo with. Haven't had that in a long while. So it's really magical to go when a new game releases that you're very excited about, like a multiplayer game like Halo, and you go on your friends list and it's literally Halo Infinite, Halo Infinite, Halo Infinite, Halo Infinite. You're like, yes, <laughs> these are my people. My time has come. I just need to get a Series X before Infinite comes out. So, oh god, good luck. That's my goal for June. That's you know, I'm just hoping that that during the the uh, the conference, Phil's just going to be like, we're having a drop right now, and then you know, I'll get it, and it'll be great. You should talk to um Rye from the Discord server. He kind of monitors uh, what places have the xbox series x available he might be able to help you all right i'll remember that give him a shout 
I'll slide into his DMs. He's one of our patrons. He's a nice guy. <laughs> Except when he's not being nice. Anything else Halo related, Oren? No, that's that's all for me. That's all for you. What was it like playing with HCS Pro Talk though? Was it was it just like insane and everyone like five minutes into the game everyone has like twenty thousand kills? You're just like, what the fuck? No, it's not quite that crazy. We we lost like maybe two matches, and there were there were super close games. Like there there was one Halo Three Sand Trap, and uh, it was one hundred and ninety nine. Like it was it was neck and neck. Holy shit! That was a close one, and then. But but yeah, we, there was a few matches where we we did some spectaculars. I actually um, there was a map Halo Four on Vortex. I got in the Wraith and went on a, a running riot with twenty kills. With just I, like I just like slaughtered the other team with the Wraith, and uh, everyone's like, "Orin, calm down! Like, let us play." <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's 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 good. It's uh it's great to kind of get those B Team B matches with uh, just a big squad. It was it was also pretty cool because we all use the uh, the the animated fire nameplate because Josh's gamer tag is JK Fire, and, uh, and so like the fire animation was like in sync for everybody, so that was like pretty cool. You gotta all be matching. Yeah, so it was it was dope. So I'm um I should be able to partake either this Tuesday or or maybe probably next Tuesday for uh, for I think cause I think Tuesday nights for our game nights hosted by. Shadow X of shout out to Nick. All right, Aaron. Anything Halo related? I know you have been killing innocents as a shark, so that's interesting. I haven't played any Halo at all. Good job. I know this is the best source for all your Halo play. <laughs> no, my games lately have consisted of Snow Runner. Oh. Follow up to Mud Runner. Which I think scratches the same itch that Farming Simulator did. So I think that's kind of... I get the same thing from that. So I played some of that. I've told you before the show, I fell back down the Star Trek Online hole. I hate myself, but I'm there. You should try RimWorld. I think you would be a RimWorld person. It's a PC game. Yeah. Ah, oh, I know. I mean, you're playing Star Trek Online, isn't that on? Is that on Xbox? It's on Xbox. That's what the only reason I'm playing it. Yeah, come join me on Xbox. Oh, well, I don't think Rim World is on Xbox, but I think that would be a game that's right up your alley. I'll have a look, maybe someday. But I don't think my laptop would appreciate if I tried to play anything with it. It's the same with mine. Holy shit! It it just about copes with editing the show and not much else. I've played Maneater because I downloaded that because that came to Game Pass. Ooh? Yeah, I'm not very far into it at the minute, but I have murdered quite a few humans and a couple of alligators. Oh, this is great. Turtles. Turtles? You can't do that. People like turtles. No one gives a shit about alligators, but come on, the turtles, really? Are you going to go for puppies next? Well, if I see any. <laughs> if they give me a bonus, I'm currently a freshwater shark, which I don't think is a thing. No, that doesn't sound like a thing. But the sh the, the game assures me it's uh, totally normal that I have sonar like a dolphin and I can swim in freshwater. What kind of shark are you, Jesus? You're a super shark because I've seen like pictures by the end of the game. You've got like glowing tentacles and all sorts of weird shit going on. Are you just a kaiju? Kind of, that's what I'm going to end up being, yeah. But you can jump out of the water, so I jumped out over, like, two guys in a skiff and bit the guy on the head and dragged him out of the boat. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Wow. That sounds kind of fantastic, actually. That's involved. I hate people. Let's kill them in a video game, right? I need to be able to jump higher. I can't get too far yet. But soon I'm going to be able to get the guys on the pier that think they're safe. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from that, did I do anything? I started the second Dune novel on Audible. That's next. Completed the first one. Quite enjoyed it. I need to read that. Yeah, I have like a backlog of influential sci-fi that I have no knowledge of. So I was like, right, we'll do this. So I'm going to do that. And then I've been recommended Necromancer. Or no, Necro. I'm that bad. I can't even remember the name. 
Is it another sci-fi? It is. I've been into, um, I, I've read all four of the Mass Effect books right before the Legendary Edition came out. So right now I'm going into some fantasy novels right now. Let's see what's on my wish list. Yes, it is Necro or Neuromancer. That's it. I knew it wasn't Necromancer. I was going Necromancer's dead things. Oh, do you do the same thing I do, where when you when someone recommends a book, you just put it on your Amazon wish list? Yep, it's in my Audible list. I have that. I have Children of Dune. I have the Witcher novel, and I have a fantasy book that was recommended to me called The Lies of Loch Lorma, or Loch Lamora. Apparently, a fantasy book called Priory of the Orange Tree is supposed to be good, and then there's a sci-fi series called Red Rising that's supposed to be good as well. That's on my list. See, we'll get through all these things. And remember now, if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash podcast evolved, you too can download a book. Yeah, you can find these and the Halo books. I have all the Halo books. I'm so happy. I have all the Halo audiobooks, every single one of them. Yeah, it's like having all of the uh, Infinity Stones, reality is whatever I want it to be. Yep, I currently, hang on, I will pull up my Audible library because it's disgraceful how many books I have now. Thanks, Audible, for signing me out. That's just what I wanted. Oh, I hate when that happens. It turned off dark mode as well. I will sit down and, like, boot up my Xbox and, like, boot up Hulu or something, and if Hulu has signed me out, I will literally go to any other service instead of logging back in. I have 72 audiobooks in my library. What the f- Jesus. That's that's a lot of books. Yep, and not only that, but I haven't subscribed to Audible continuously, so I've taken like breaks of six months. Are you crazy? I could be. Oh, okay. Oh look, it tells me my Total listening time is two months, seven days, one hour, and 29 minutes of audiobooks. <laughs> wow. But that's nothing. I've listened to podcasts for 144 days. Damn. That's, um, those are some, those are some good numbers. I wonder if iTunes has those kind of stats. Curious. I don't know, but Pocket Cast does, which is one of the reasons I changed to it. I should do that. I'm using the Google Podcast app is what I use for everything right now. Oh, look, it gives me a stat with my hundred and in the 144 days and 13 hours that I have listened to podcasts, you will have blinked 1,457,000 times. Are these things you really want to know, though? <laughs> this, you should put these stats on your gravestone when you're dead. Be like, he listened to 2,000 hours of podcasts. <laughs> Here lies the fucker that had more podcast subscriptions than time to listen to them. And he had, you know, 2,000 books on audio, on Audible as well. <laughs> yeah, to answer your original question, nothing Halo related, no. <laughs> oh yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> what, we're recording a podcast right now. We're supposed to, do we actually have a script that we're completely off of? But I'm kind of enjoying it, actually. Welcome to Podcast Evolved, your home for anything but Halo. It's tough when the last Halo game came out in, like, 2015, other than Halo Wars 2. What are we supposed to do? So you're telling me it's a dead franchise, Krista? We should move on. Gears of War? Oof. Well, no, I'm telling you that it's really, really hard to con- continually talk about a series when they're not consistently putting out games, okay? But I, appreci- I appreciate your guys' hustle. We're doing a good job. Anyway... I get to talk about me now, and all I've been doing is playing Mass Effect, which is pretty much Halo, so there we go. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah, that was really easy. So, Oren, it's your turn now. You can talk about the news, and I know you're going to keep us on topic, so uh, here, you can have the responsibility. Cracks knuckles, stretches, lifts some weights. All right, let's get to it. So, we have a fair bit of news for the month of May. We have two cannon fodders from our friend of the show, Jeff Easterling, Gamertag Grim Brother 1, issue 113, Peak Design. It uh, introduces two new characters from the Banished uh, faction, and it kind of calls back to episode, or sorry, issue 108, where Grim introduced Jega Rodomne, where he is a Sanghili blademaster who's loyal to Eshram and had some really cool concept art. 
And in this issue, we learn about two brothers, one of which we kind of already knew about, called Hyperius, from the... Uh, there's like a toy... No, not a toy leak, but he f- his character first appeared on one of the... Um, kind of sort of toy lines that was talked about. Well, it turns out that he has a brother and his name is Torvaris. And uh, there's no lore or anything just from the sides that they don't like humans and, you know, either UNSC or Spartans. So they are going to be adversaries that Chief and the pilot will no doubt have to face in Halo Infinite. So check out their... Well, there's a lot of concept art in this issue. So if you haven't checked out issue 113, go check it out. There's also a new uh, weapon that was shown, which is a turret called a scrap cannon. It was nicknamed the Gatling Mortar, and uh, it functions similarly to other turrets we have in the game, uh, like the plasma cannon and the uh, just, I guess, machine gun turret, uh, or you can get behind it. Didn't we see that in the um, Ghosts of Reach, Shadows of Reach? Oh, no, we saw the, the, the skewer. We learned about the skewer, which is like a harpoon rocket launcher is kind of what I'm picturing. An anti-vehicle spear-like launcher thing, but this sounds more like, in my head, I think it sounds like the brute shot, but like a turret version. But also with mortar, like I get the sense that you might have to shoot it like up a little bit. There's going to be a bit of an arc, but yeah, kind of like a, a brute shot on steroids. Well, I mean, mortars typically fire kind of straight up, and they they kind of go up, and and then the like, the impact of it coming down from the sky is is they use that in like trench warfare and all that kind of crap. But um, anyway, that's just just going off of the nickname. Do you remember the the rocket turrets in Halo Three, where when it's on the turret, they shoot up into the air and come down onto the target or whatever? But when you carry it around, you just shoot the rocket straight out in front of you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The missile pod? Yeah, the missile pod, yeah. From Halo 3. Yeah, I'm kind of picturing something similar to that. Just just from the word mortar. And Gatling, I mean, I don't know exactly what that means, but that kind of just means that it continuously cycles. So, yeah, who who knows? And then shout out to Survivor in the chat. Hyperius was in the uh, Megacon Trucks anti-air cannon set. So that's where we kind of saw him first. And there's that whole argument over what kind of Spartan helmet he had in the uh, on his shoulder, if it was like lock and all this kind of stuff. And you can see that a little bit in the uh, the concept art, but it's just the uh, just kind of looks like a generic Spartan helmet or something that they've used their armor for. Anyway, cool stuff. And then our last little announcement for Halo Infinite with some more concept art is the Razorback, which is sort of a warthog companion. Uh, where, whereas instead of having a weapon turret in the back of the Warthog, it has just more seating. And Jeff kind of just says that it's more of like a marine transport Warthog. So as you're driving around the ring, if you see a group or a platoon of Marines that need your help, you can recruit them and uh, hop in the Razorback and traverse the ring to whatever engagement you're going to. And I also see this as a perfect way for when you're playing four-player co-op, for everyone to hop inside the Razorback to go from mission to mission. Just wanted to point that one out. Do we think we'll see... I wonder, will we get like a weaponized version of it? I don't think so. That's basically the Warthog. I mean, think like the Warthog is... You have a you have a passenger... Like, like basically to have a four-person transport where two people are riding and one person's driving and the other person's shooting. But they do have like the civilian or they do have like the transport version of the Warthog already. So I kind of wonder, like, is this just a variant of like a more heavily armored Warthog? It might be slower, but it might take, you know, the way they talked about like how they might have or they're going to have like destructibility in pieces like suspension, maybe blow wheels off, things like that. Could this just be like a heavier armored line of Warthog? Maybe so. It, yeah, it's interesting to see how this varies from the 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 transport in Halo Three. Like, I specifically remember on the Covenant mission when you're deactivating the what the shield generators or something, and uh, and you can hop in one of those marine transports. But as far as we knew, it looked more like a warthog. This definitely looks a little bit sleeker. Like you said, more armor looks to be a little lower to the ground. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I personally don't see a weapon being slapped on it. I think we just get the Warthog. 
And then the rest of the issue is filled with shout outs from different community members posting awesome Halo content. And we got a shout out. Woo woo, podcast evolve, go us. Um, and that was for our interview with Kelly Gay and her new book, Halo Point of Light. If you haven't listened to that, go check it out. It's on YouTube and on our podcast feeds. Obviously, spoilers for the book. But it was nice to see that as well as other community podcasters and YouTubers and uh, their content being shared and highlighted on the Cannon Fodder. So if you want to support other content creators, you can dive into those pieces, uh, like I said, from issue 113 of Cannon Fodder. Then, like two weeks later, out of nowhere, we got Cannon Fodder issue 114. I think they're building to something. Oh, I don't know. I mean, is there a special number or something coming up? I think so. We'll have to do some research and figure it out. We'll report back. Maybe 120? Yeah, I think so. Or 121. Get a little palindrome in there. Oh, they're celebrating the palindromes, of course. What What was this one? Oh, right. So this one was a teaser for Season 7 of Master Chief Collection and the uh, different cosmetics that we'll get and other updates. And the name for this one is called Elite. And I know Krista is very excited for what we are going to get for this. And uh, I'm just going to kind of read uh, a little snippet that's from the cannon fodder in regards to the armor and cosmetics that we're going to be getting. Uh, if you remember, Anvil Station is a clandestine site where members of the UNSC and allied Swords of Sang Helios work together to develop new technologies and strategies in a joint effort that seeks to build upon a foundation of cooperation in hopes to move the futures of both species forward in a positive direction. Seasons 4 and 5 showcase some of the developmental fruits of the UNSC's labor in the added armor sets. Season 7 will bring some of the combat harnesses developed and or utilized by our zygactical-handed friends. Zygodactyl-handed friends. I think it's because they only have three fingies. Yeah, three fingies to hold those swords. <laughs> So we get a uh, an array of new elite armor sets for the Halo 3 multiplayer. You can again check out the 3D models, the in-game models on the issue. We have Keepword, Accord, General, Sinshal, Scion, Asus, Asusna, and Artisan. I love this. What, this next part or the, the armors? I just like that the elites are getting uh, some love. Yeah, I think it I think it is good because there are some dino heads out there, <coughs> Tom, who like the elites in, in the multiplayer and, and kind of want more content. And so I think that this is good for those players. Uh, me personally, I I mean, I, I like looking at the models like I definitely customized, you know, my my elite armor to cool mix matching and all that kind of stuff. But I just prefer playing as a Spartan. But it's, it's it's definitely cool, like you said, Chris, that you kind of get this recognition and this spotlight for for this part of the game. And a I know a lot of people ask for like playable elites in the new Halo games and stuff like that. And whether Halo Infinite has playable elites in it or not remains to be seen. But it's nice that they're at least, you know, allowing people who prefer to play as an elite in some of the multiplayer modes to be able to customize their character a little bit more. Totally. And then to add to the weapon skins, we're going to be getting energy sword skins. So I have a list here of the different names and their corresponding colors. So we have F or, or Evocati's Edge, which is white, Necroplasm, which is green, Light of Jewelry, yellow, Kaidon's Guard, orange, Dark Star, purple, Bloodbane, red, and Lance of Suban, pink. I, Lance of Suban like sets up a, sets off alarms in my head just because the um, in Halo Five the carbine that acts as a needle rifle is called um, Blood of Suban. So could you imagine having a sword that has like the um, super combine like effect when you kill people with it? Oh wow! I would love I I would love that. It doesn't have to actually have anything other than just the explosion that happens when you hit people with it. But as a person who collects energy swords, this has given me a lot of happiness because I like, I collect them in real life. So I would love for them to come out with some of these in real life. So to, to do a sidestep, it would be interesting if 343 implemented this feature in Halo as for like favorite weapon skins that are kind of randomized. 
So like in in Apex Legends, there's a bunch of different weapon and uh, character skins that you can get, and you can set some of them as favorite. And so each game, it kind of randomizes or at least cycles through the ones you have selected. So you can still get these cool and interesting skins and not tied to only one if you like multiple ones. So it could be would be really cool if you unlocked all of these and then had like a randomized sort of feature to where each color kind of cycles through for each uh, um, like multiplayer match you go to. I like that. What if we could just have one super elite sword that strobed through the colors as you played? There you go. Rainbow sword for Aaron. That's what he wants. Rainbow sword. You can just run through the map screaming, warning may cause epilepsy. Can it uh can it play like the Nyan Cat song or something? I don't know. <laughs> nyan, nyan, oh, nyan, nyan, nyan. It plays like some rave music. Right, so shit. we needed to cycle through the colors, play random music, and shoot rainbows out your ass as you run. Uh yes. I think that would be the ideal version of that. Isn't there a skull for Halo 2 anniversary where you can shoot the scarab gun but in like a rainbow jet? I think so, yes. So it's possible. It's something like that. And then I know when you... There's another skull, which is, I think, my favorite in Halo 2A, is when you're fighting uh, the Prophet of Regret and you jump on his chair and you punch him, it's guitar sounds. I love that. (laughs) Right. Well, moving along, Jeff also reminds us in issue 114 that Dark Horse will be reissuing two separate Halo comic collections, the first being the reissue of the Halo graphic novel, as well as what is now called the Halo Legacy Collection, which is a compendium of Halo Uprising, Halo Helljumper, and Halo Bloodline, which were very, very early on issues that were produced uh, during the Bungie era. And so you can get all of those in one collection later this year if you need to add those to your collection of Halo lore. Moving right along, we have one more article from The Waypoint. Uh, it is a blog called Spring Scoops. It talks about how MCC Season 7 has started flighting, and they're testing primarily the custom game browser as well as visual improvements for Halo Combat Evolved to better mirror the legacy title. When CE was ported onto PC back in like 2004 or 2003, whenever that was, there were some bugs and issues and discrepancies from the base OG Xbox game. So when 343 took the PC port and made that the foundation of the re, uh, anniversary, anniversary edition in 2011, and then for Master Chief Collection, all those same bugs and discrepancies kind of carried over. And so it seems that Season 7 is looking to address those. And some of the changes has popped up on YouTube because, like we said, the flighting has started. So it's really, really great that 343 is continuing to monitor those, you know, discrepancies and and bugs to kind of make the experience, you know, truer as it can be like it was to the original release back in 2001. So yay for that. And then lastly... There was another employee spotlight for Irene Zhao and or Zhu. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. And she's a uh, a UX designer, user experience designer. And so I re- I recommend anyone who's interested to kind of learn about the different things that one needs to think about as a UX designer for the player as they're navigating the menus and and how their fulfillment is uh, throughout a game's life cycle. It's it's a very interesting way of thinking compared to just the the straightforward like design or art or gameplay of a game. It's definitely having a, you know, thinking about the player element and wrapping everything into a unique package. Um, so the UX team is definitely, um, you know, very interesting and, and very different from the rest of the uh, gaming teams within a, you know, design team. So recommend everyone go read that. It's pretty cool. Um, and that's, oh well, no, we still got some Halo news, but it's kind of wrapped into some Xbox news. So of course, this is the 20th year of Xbox and Xbox is of course celebrating 20 years of Xbox. A few stats here on the OG Xbox games were played in the crisp rev- resolution of 640 <laughs> by 480 and only had eight gigabytes of storage and 64 megabytes of memory. Do you feel old yet? I'm so old. And over 7,000 games have been released across 
the Xbox platform over the past two decades, two decades. So this is monumental for the Xbox brand uh, and for Microsoft as a whole. It also marks the 20th anniversary of Halo, of course, because Halo was the flagship franchise that launched with the original Xbox. So not only is Xbox celebrating 20 years of Xbox, but it's also celebrating 20 years of Halo. And they're doing this partnership with the Xbox gear shop where there's a lot of 20-year milestone memorabilia and t-shirts and stuff. It's like all sold out. Well, you can continue to monitor it. (laughs) You can head over to gear.box, sorry, gear.xbox.com slash collections slash 20th dash anniversary dash collection, or you can just Google 20th anniversary Halo gear. You can find the page and just monitor it as they get more in stock. And if you want to share your social media, if you want to share on social media, some of your favorite Xbox moments, stories, friendships, achievements or anything you can use the hashtag xbox 20 and they will be highlighted from now until november 15th which is very interesting because that was the release date of the original xbox but it's like well why would they stop on that date outside of the fact that that was when the og xbox released and all the tinfoil halo heads out there are thinking that that's going to be the day that halo infinite comes out because why would you continue tweeting about xbox halo infinite's out Xbox is over when Halo Infinite's out. No one's going to care. <laughs> I hope they restock their 20th anniversary merch, though. Some of the stuff's so sweet. I like the 20, and then the uh, hole in the zero on the 20 is Master Chief silhouette. It's really cool. Yes, yes. It's so cool. I think I might try to get a hat. I want to get a hat, too, but it's all sold out. <laughs> Damn it. It's all sold out, so... Just keep an eye on that. If you didn't know about it, it was on one of the Xbox uh, news blogs. And then also, the moment we've all been waiting for, minus the actual game release, is that Xbox has finally announced their E3 presentation conference for this digital E3 event this year. It is being marketed as the Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase. So there's a little bit of a rumor whether or not Xbox and Bethesda would be doing different conferences or if it would be a joint conference but you know now that xbox owns bethesda they're doing a joint content uh, conference which i think is awesome because it just kind of tightens up everything that's being released bethesda's uh, conferences in the past in my opinion had to kind of like lengthen their show to make it a little bit more with some added sort of uh like spectacle which wasn't inherently bad but it was just like i just want to see more games so now that they're jam packing everything in a 90 minute show it's definitely going to be a lot and a lot of games if todd howard and phil spencer walk out on that stage i'm just gonna die at the same time yeah when they're on the if they go come on the stage at the same time i'm just gonna die i love and then they're gonna they're gonna hold hands and then put it up in the air and be like check this out and then it's gonna be elder (laughs) scrolls 6 if it's not elder scrolls 6 i'm gonna be fucking pissed and i'm sending an army to maryland so you would rather elder scrolls 6 than starfield fuck starfield fuck that (laughs) i want my elder scrolls damn it Krista's laying down the smack. I don't need any more sci-fi in my life. We got Mass Effect and Halo coming out this year. We don't need another sci-fi franchise. We need to go back to the good old fantasy and magic romp through a magical land where people tell you about, you know, how you violated the law and how they've lost their sweet role and how they've took an arrow to the knee. Though That's the kind of adventures we need. Come on. You wait until you find out the next uh, Skyrim set in space. No. <laughs> I don't think so. Tamriel doesn't really work like that. Tamriel doesn't have space. It's just this realm. Are you telling me it's flat? No, Nern, Nern is a planet, but the heavens are created by the gods, and there's not actually any stars or anything like that. It's just tears of, in the fabric of the universe. So, there you go. I know the deep lore. Nerd. Look at here. The show will be Sunday, June 13th of this year at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and 6 p.m. GMT. It'll approximately be 90 minutes, which is kind of the typical length, uh, between 90 minutes and two hours. And the promotional image that accompanied this announcement has Halo Infinite multiplayer armor is kind of at the top. And then at the bottom, you can see very distinctly the planet that is from the Starfield announcement trailer from a couple years ago. 
So it it seems that Infinite and Starfield are the two headliners for this showcase. Because Halo is so big, I feel like Starfield's not going to come out this year and instead would be teased for next year, personally. So we've seen we've seen Bethesda have a very short lead time when it comes to announcing and releasing a game. When Fallout 4 came out, it was announced in May and released in November. So it was a very short lead time, but I do not see them doing this with Starfield. I feel like we don't know enough about Starfield. I think that because of COVID, it's probably going to get delayed anyway. Honestly, my prediction for this E3 is going to be a lot of game delays. I think a lot of games are going to have to be pushed back because of COVID and what what happened last year and stuff like that. We're hoping it doesn't extend to Halo Infinite because it already got delayed, but... Uh, I I'm, I can't see Starfield coming out this year. I would be very surprised. I'd be surprised just because Infinite's coming out this year. Like, I don't think you'd want to put those two together, but I feel like this is the perfect time to at least show what Starfield is to get people excited for what's coming next year. Oh, they definitely need to do that. It might be like a beginning of 2022. It could be like a February or March release. That's true. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking because... Well, it doesn't really matter to them anymore because they don't need a they don't need to sell anything. They just need to get you to sign up to Game Pass. So like they could release them a month apart and it, they really don't give a shit, but I could see them saying Halo's out this November and like Starfield's out in February and just be like, "There, it doesn't need to be out at like a normal time. It can be whenever." Cuz I think they said a while back when they bought the new studios, they want one big game every quarter. Oh, okay. So that could be quarter one. Yeah. So like four titles a year, really. Maybe that next year might be a bit of a stretch with COVID, but I could say they could manage it. Well, and I think it would be really good for just, just the time cycle because quarter one and quarter three seem to have nothing come out ever. So in the summer and right at the start of the year is usually the dead times and everything comes out quarter two and four. So if they can get something consistently quarter one and three, it would be a big hit because those quarters are usually very sparse. Yeah, and I think they don't really give a shit anymore about who buys it because they know they've got, what, what did they say? It's They've got, I forget what the last number for Game Pass was, but it's like higher than I thought it would have been. So they have all these millions of people that'll just go, fuck it, I'll download it and try it. You might not have ever liked a Bethesda game, but you'll go, oh, this Starfields thing, thing's out, and I get it. It's the same reason I'm playing Man Eater. I'd have never paid for that game, but I'm playing it. God, I love Game Pass so much. It's so good. I need to renew mine. My, mine's expiring soon. Blue Steel says 23 million plus subscribers. They're making so much money. Holy shit. Not off me, because I pay them the bare minimum till 2022, but... I mean, still. Even if half of those people are paying the fourteen ninety nine, they're making a lot of money. That's the thing. I think it's just going to be like, they don't really care if you buy their game or not. They just want you to, like, Netflix and sub in and play it. And the Halo multiplayer is going to be free, so there's even more people to play that. I just hope whatever whatever content that's coming down the line is included in uh like like if, if Halo Infinite has like a yearly release of like an expansion or whatever it is for this 10 year plan I just hope all that's included in Game Pass because sometimes DLC is not and I'd be a little sad I think it would be just because it's a direct Microsoft game well Minecraft Dungeons actually you you couldn't you couldn't get those DLCs I mean I I mean if we didn't pay for Halo Infinite and we're paying for the DLC I think they'll do it because they're going to make their money off those armor skins. Like, that's really the same reason that the multiplayer is free. I think we'll get all the content. I think it'll be, bet you what they'll actually do is you'll get it free on Game Pass Ultimate, but you won't get it on standard Game Pass because they've done that with a couple of things now where DLC was only available if you were an Ultimate subscriber. That would be interesting. I just hope that their messaging is clear because I could see that being a little rocky. Yeah, they would have to have a good marketing team. But Microsoft has always had a pretty decent marketing team, especially in the last couple of years. Especially after the Xbox One launch. Oh, fuck. I think they fired their entire marketing team for <laughs> a new one, probably. 
Well, the big question that, of course, I would think everyone that is listening to the show would be asking is how we are going to bring this news to our listeners. And, of course, you could watch the showcase on Twitch and YouTube and Twitter and somewhere else. Or our very own Chris the Brown, whose Twitch channel is Conan XD underscore, will be doing what she did last year and what she's been continuing doing throughout the year and will be live streaming. So you can join her as well as Colin, Tom, and David, who are all not here, but you know, they're they're around. <laughs> the four of them will host a watch along of the game showcase. So I I don't know, you know, we're still figuring out the logistics of it all, but you can expect it to go live around 30 minutes, 20 minutes before the show. We'll kind of make sure all of the the layouts and design are good and the audio is clear and do all that kind of stuff. And then uh, at the stroke of 10 a.m. Pacific, we will watch and we will react and it will be amazing. I'm so excited. I will actually not be on Chris the stream, but I will be with our partners, Will and Josh, over at HGS Pro Talk, because they will also do their own watch along. So if you would like to watch both, because two is always better than one, you can go over to HGS Pro Talk on Twitch and you can watch the three of us do the exact same thing. So I don't know how you want to, you know, however your setup is, but those are options available to you to kind of hear our live reactions, us talking about it. And, uh, and kind of experience it with us because that's ultimately what we love doing with you guys because that's why we do these shows and these live shows to begin with. And of course, we'll be doing something with the archived footage as well. So if you want to watch it, want to watch it on your own time, we will have those VODs available. Yes, if you want to experience, I totally re uh, respect those who want to just lock themselves in whatever room with whatever computer or TV monitor or projector screen and experience it all then go do that it's uh you know these showcases are for you the gamer then after that there's more um like last year you know there, there, we, we have a large crew i don't know if you know that i don't know if you guys listen to every single show but like there's like there's nine of us that make podcast evolve content i remember when it was only just four and i'm sure krista and david remember when there was only just three three yeah uh, crazy but we have nine people, and it's hard to do a nine-person podcast. It's hard to do a five-person podcast. So instead, we're doing two podcasts with four people uh, because of just scheduling and all that. So like last year, we had a red team show and a blue team show. Get it? The red team show will happen approximately 30 minutes after the game showcase, which will be about 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. GMT. And that will be Krista, Tom, Colin, and myself and we will be live here on our Discord channel, just like we are now if you're listening to us live. And we will discuss everything that was announced, our, our immediate reactions, all the notes we scribbled on the back of our hands, and talking about Halo, as well as what also was announced from Halo and Bethesda, or sorry, Xbox and Bethesda, but also mainly Halo. And then, if you want more to listen to, 30 minutes after that, we're going to have Blue Team Talk. And that will be David, Aaron, and then Will and Josh from HGS Pro Talk. And they will get same sort of setup. So if you're already in the Discord listening to the red team, you just need to go and make yourself a sandwich or something and come back. And you are in the same spot where we're going to be for the second episode. And it's going to be the exact same thing. It's, it's just going to be a different group of people talking about their reactions, their impressions, and kind of what we, what we think about all this. And so you can, you know, take take part in the chat and, and listen in. We have the added advantage of going later, so we get to see what Halo Cannon thinks of everything and then pretend we figured it out on our own. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, but don't you know that Halo Cannon always goes off of the first team that goes off, so, you know... It's just going to be our opinion. Halo yeah. Cannon's going to listen, and then Halo Cannon will discuss it, and then you'll go off of Halo Cannon, so it's just going to come back to us anyway. We could always do a nine-person podcast, but I'll actually, I will cry while I edit it. Like, there's no, there's no way around that. It would be too chaotic. It would just, yeah, it would, yeah, it would be. It's just much. hard. It's hard to, like, monitor people talking over each other. And also, like, you're going to have people who are going to be sitting, like, for, like, 40 minutes not talking while everyone else, like, has their, like, to go around the table, it, like, would just take too long. And so we felt that it would just be more engaging 
for the listener as well for us who want to talk about it to just have that kind of tighter knit group. So that's what we're doing. We we feel like it worked well last year. If if anyone, you know, who's listening now listened to last year's, you know, we we thought it went very well. So we're just kind of doing the same thing. We're just adding in Will and Josh from HGS Pro Talk because they're awesome. I was about to say that it it went I think personally spectacularly well last year. It was like the the most perfect everything's going amazing and then a week later they delayed infinite and we all just went fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were so on point. We were like the most professional we've ever been as a podcast. We had graphics, we had information, we had shows coming out the wazoo. It was brilliant. And then they went, no, you're not getting the game this year. And all of the timelines fell apart. So it's got to work this year because we're not doing this for third year. Yeah, because what's an, a guilty pleasure of mine, which you guys probably know this, but like part of the reason I love all this announcement and Halo content is because I get to schedule the rest of the year. <laughs> I know. Once we get an official announcement, we can finally put some plans in a in place that we've been waiting to do. So I just, yeah, so I, I kind of, you know, really like that aspect of it as well. We'll add in some sexy screenshots of orange scheduling and Excel spreadsheets later if anyone wants to see that at the end of the show. Yeah, we should use those uh we should use those as promotional images when we finally get things announced. We can release our Google Calendar. <laughs> All right. So anything else that you guys want to talk about? Any sort of predictions you want to do for the show or you know, we 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 do have our Halo headlines, which uh, have already been released for the people listening on VOD. But we'll talk about kind of as it, it, we're still a few, we're still like two or three weeks out. So you know, there's still a little bit that could be announced. But this has been something that everyone's been twiddling their thumbs over when we were going to learn. And so now we have dates. Now we have times. Of course, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on the Discord. We're going to be pumping out this schedule that I just said over and over again so you know where and how to listen to. If you can only make it to one of the shows and you can when you, you can listen to the other ones on the, the YouTube or on our podcast feed later after it's edited, but this will be a very busy few days for us uh, because we want to get that information to you and also hear what you guys think on the show. It's a great time to be a Halo fan. Oh, and an Xbox fan, and a Bethesda fan. We're all very excited to see what's going to be coming out this year. <laughs> and even beyond Halo and Xbox, there's so many more uh, games and companies that still have a lot of cool things that are coming out. We'll have to wait and see how it goes. I About the only thing I'm excited to see about now, we've talked about it in the chat, is beta. Yes. If there's going to be a multiplayer beta, do you think that will be an announcement like, and it's available today, and then we're all just going to melt down because then we have to record an episode after this instead of playing the beta? I think that's what they'll do. I don't think that's what they're going to do. I think that the, a Halo beta announcement for Infinite is not quite, like in terms of dropping right now, I, I don't think that's in the best of their interest. I think it's better if they just say, you know, coming soon or even if they, maybe they even give a date, but just let they, they like say that it's coming very, very soon as opposed to like right now. Because like, again, so many people are just going to run off and go play it. Well, that would be that would probably be end of the show thing. So if they do like if they open the show with the narrative part and the campaign part of Halo Infinite and then they close the show with the multiplayer aspect of Infinite, and then at the end of the show they go, don't watch anyone else's conference because Halo Infinite Beta is available now, and then everybody goes that. that that's the only way I could see it work. It's not good. The only thing is they've said it's going to be like through the Insider program because they've teased that you need to make sure your Insider thing's up and running. So I think what they're going to do is they'll just be like, We'll start sending out invites now, immediately after the show, and then you'll just have to wait for your invite. So I think that's how they'll stop it, like, turning into a shit show immediately. I think that's how they do, I think that's how they do, like, the quote-unquote alpha to get insiders. But I feel like with a game like Halo Infinite, you need a public beta. And may maybe the public beta happens after the summer or just later in the fall. But yeah, definitely... A, a Master Chief Collection type of flighting program with the Insider program 
that yeah i can see them saying i think i think that's what they will do that's what i would double down on aaron is that they say we'll be sending invites out later today or in the, in the coming week and everyone can enjoy it by the end of the month who are part of the insider program so sign up for the insider program if you haven't yes everyone should be signed up for that um uh, all right well that's all i got I'll swing it over to Aaron to talk about our digest before we uh, take off for the for the day. Right, now I've got to talk. Okay, we have a few things to talk about, and we have some things we can't talk about, so we will roll through all of this. First up is the Road to Infinite. We have put an extension on the Road to Infinite after last year. It continues on. Our last episode was on multiplayer, and that was, I believe, Oren, you were on that. Yes, I had that, and again, for like the eighth time, Will and Josh joined me for that one, and we talked about the uh, the Halo multiplayer in the first-person shooter games for the last 20 years, and just talked about what the meta was, and how people responded, and what were the, the, the hot topics of way back when, like sprint, and armor lock, and everything else, dual wielding. So yeah, it was was a a chunky episode too. It was about two hours. Yes, it was very long because I did listen to that and was, I loaded it up and I went, I'm going to listen to this. And I went, wow, that's a big one. So it's a big one. And so yeah, we did that one. And uh, like you're pretty much about to say, like we, we have a few more episodes or rather just like slots for episodes planned. And uh, we're, we're just going to wait for after the game, uh, games showcase just just in case some of the content that we have scheduled needs to be tweaked or adjusted based off of what's shown. But we have, I think, three more episodes planned before Infinite comes out. Yeah, we are kind of in a weird limbo at the minute where the chances of doing something and having it be irrelevant straight after on the show is high. So it's going to be the same thing with the character dossier. The last dossier we did was 343 Guilty Spark. The next dossier is going to be delayed until we find out what happens in the showcase. We have a pretty good idea about who we're going to cover, but just in case they throw us a curveball, we are going to hold off on that and wait and see. Hang on for further details. Uh, Mission Debrief. Oh, that's still a show? Apparently it's still a thing, Krista. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It's an awesome show. It says here that... The team are resurrecting the dead corpse of Mission Debrief to do things with it. Does that sound about right? More or less. We're doing an ancient satanic ritual to uh, bring it back from the dead. We've been studying necromancy these last couple months, so we're hoping to to have a zombie Mission Debrief for you guys pretty soon. Yay! See, it's much harder when when you don't have the flood available to resurrect these things, but we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll work. We're working on it. Right. Next up on the book clubs, the last one was the last voyage of the Infinite Secure. That was Halo Evolutions. The next one, which we will be slotting in in place of the character dossier, will be armor testing from Halo the Graphic Novel. So you can jump on on that and listen to it. That'll be... Will that be the last episode we record before the big live live show? So th- some some background insight or behind the scenes insight for the listeners we're going to record this next but it won't air until after our blue and red team episodes air it it's not going to air till like the 23rd of june so it's quite a ways away but we are going to record it next yep because the blue and red team episodes we're going to record them on sunday and then we're going to have to turn them over much more quickly than we normally do to hit the the wednesday that way our everything else lines up so thank you and David for for doing that for us. <laughs> <laughs> You've been volunteered. Oh, I love editing. It's my favorite thing in the world. I hope it is since you do it every week. You do it all the time. It just depends if it's been a, <laughs> if it's been a good recording, I enjoy it. If it's been a bad recording, I hate my life. So we'll see how it goes. Next up, we have this thing called builds with blocks haven't heard of that before that doesn't sound like a halo podcast sounds like a toy yeah podcast. can confirm no halos in that title i think that's about jurassic park i think the guy who runs it is a jurassic park guy i've heard dodgy things about that guy christy you shouldn't talk to him he 
It's a dino head, yeah. It's weird. What's it doing in our digest? He's into dinosaurs and Lego. It's very dodgy. <laughs> that's that's like two red flags right there. To be fair, he did post a video into the chat that he made, and I was very impressed with it. Can't tell you what it was yet because that would spoil things, but keep an eye out and uh, throw a few likes up for the guys. Tom Jurassic. Yeah. That's what we're looking for for the non-Halo stuff that you might go to only after you've consumed our Halo content. Yeah, you have to listen to every single uh, Podcast Evolved episode to unlock any other show in the Podcast Evolved network. The last video episode that the guys put out, there was Fight Hard, Die Well, uh, Stop Motion, and Fall 2021 set predictions. So we had those. The last reviews was the Mega Construct Scarab, and the next episode will be... An interview, see below. I don't think I was supposed to read that part out loud. Next up, guest interviews. Interviews with uh, the influential employees, authors, and content creators behind the Halo franchise. So, the latest interview, which by the time you've heard this will be live, is Tim DeDabo. If you're listening to this... Who's that? <laughs> he does this small side character in Halo called Guilty Spark. <gasps> wow. The guy who killed Johnson? That asshole. No. I like Guilty Spark better. We had words with him about I that. hate that guy. If you're in the chat now listening to this live, that episode's going up on Wednesday. If you're listening to this on the regular podcast feed, you will hopefully have listened to it. It was a good episode. Tim was great. I think the final cut's about an hour and ten minutes, give or take, so... He was uh, fantastic. You can listen to the episode and listen to Krista lose her shit in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> when he spoke for the first time, Krista just melted. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> but she held it together for the most part. We were very proud of her. She did. She did. Good Good job. Was that, was that the first interview you uh, you hosted? think so i think i might have done one of the ones previously like either the jeff one or something like that i don't remember or maybe i was just on those episodes i've been on a lot of the interviews so it was good it went very well we enjoyed it and his audio is is crisp yeah we need to do more voice actors the one beautiful thing about having voice actors and narrators on the show is they record fantastic audio scott brick was the same beautiful the next interview will be someone who will record their own audio as well, I hope. Halo Cannon! What? Yep. That guy. That's the that guy who steals guy. the ideas from us. <laughs> but then we steal the ideas from him. It's actually going to be a cease and desist. <laughs> We're going to be serving him on that podcast. He's just going to come and wipe us out. Don't do that. Don't, don't antagonize him. I'm joking. I'm sure he's listening to this laughing while taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking please don't be mad at me the bills with blocks guys are doing that that interview okay i won't even be on that one that's going to drop on june 6th so keep an eye out for that and the final section we have here is for the hcs pro talk guys we have a few things here now that we're busy with them the most recent map legends is hang em high if you have heard that have we, have we announced what Map Legends like is? It's them going over the multiplayer maps, right? Yeah, okay. It's basically a, 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 a survey from a lore perspective of the multiplayer maps, of the like competitive multiplayer maps, and then we kind of package in like remakes or inspirations throughout the series. So Hang Am I has two remakes and an inspiration, so we talk about four episodes or four maps in that one video. And it's all brought to you through the dulcet, Beautiful tones of Oren. Yes. Yes, I do do all that. You record other things? What the f- I, I do. I, I do. I, I managed to find, find pr time to do it. We have this barter setup, you see, where Oren records some stuff for them, and then the guys record some stuff for us. So if you're listening to the episode now, you're going to hear an update on the Halo Championship series from the HCS Pro Talk guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello!
Hello, Podcast Evolved audience, and welcome to Inside HCS, your monthly recap of all things Halo Esports, presented by us, none other than HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Halo Esports podcast. For this segment, we'll be recapping the competition from the month of May. So let's get right into it. What is the HCS? For this segment, I always want to open with what exactly the HCS is. The HCS, or Halo Championship Series, is the umbrella in which all Halo competition lives under. As of right now, official tournaments are on the sort of hiatus until the release of Halo Infinite. This means that the community continues to do what it does best, put the scene on its back, and put on some amazing tournaments for folks to compete in while we all wait patiently for the release of Infinite. For all major announcements for the HCS team over at 343 Industries, please make sure to follow their Twitter account, at HCS. Each month, alongside the Inside Infinite blog post, Tashi of the HCS team releases a blog post containing information regarding a segment of the Halo esports ecosystem. With the announcement of the Microsoft and Bethesda E3 showcase, this, along with the Inside Infinite blog post, have been delayed a month. Therefore, without a blog post for this month, let's have Will recap what were the last two major Halo 5 tournaments as we wait in anticipation for the launch of Halo Infinite. Thanks, Josh. We'll start off with Halo 5 and the two amazing tournaments we had put on by organizations that are coming in to Halo Infinite. So we'll start off with the NV2v2 Invitational. One of the major organizations heading into Halo Infinite is looking to provide some Halo 5 2v2 action in the form of an Invitational. Four teams of two were invited to compete head-to-head, one of which were the Monday Tuesdays Invitational Champions in Boobo Doobo and Septify. And while Bound was nowhere to be found, it didn't matter. Turns out you can pair Renegade with anyone you want and he will continue to dominate and win events. Sure, it helped that he competed along longtime teammate Stellar, but he can really do it all. Let's see if the dominance continues with the introduction of Halo Infinite Esports. And then the Sentinels Halo 5 Send Off Tournament. The largest Halo 5 tournament since DreamHack Atlanta in 2019. The organization of Sentinels wanted to help and provide to the community what was the last major Halo 5 4 before tournament. Hence the name Send Off. The event began with an open tournament where the top four teams would earn their spot in the championship Sunday bracket against the top four invited teams. The open tournament had plenty of breakneck competition, but the upsets didn't start coming in full swing until the championship Sunday. The four teams to qualify included the Kansas City Pioneers, Flyers, Falling Esports, and the Latin American squad of the Pittsburgh Knights. These squads would get their chance to compete against the powerhouse rosters of Sentinels, Cloud9, Envy, and Inconceivable, and what would end up being one of the craziest championship Sundays witnessed in a Halo 5 tournament in a very long time. Championship Sunday brought what could only be described as a Cinderella story. The roster of Flyers with the substitute player of Ryan Noob ran through the gauntlet that was the loser's bracket, taking down some of the best squads in the entire game, including the home team Sentinels, the Kansas City Pioneers, and Team Envy. Their final boss, Cloud9, who had only lost a single map in their trip through the winner's bracket. Why was this such a big deal? Well, only a day earlier, the same roster lost twice to the winners of the open bracket in the Kansas City Pioneers. So let's put that in perspective for a second. Flyers, with Ryan Noob as a substitute player in this event, were able to knock out a multiple world champion roster in Sentinels with the return of Lethal. The team that previously beat them twice in the open bracket with the Kansas City Pioneers and the dominant roster in Team Envy alongside the return of the Wizard, I Got Your Pistola. Unfortunately for Flyers, their Cinderella story came to an abrupt end with Cloud9 and the Phenom of Renegade completing the 3-0 sweep and becoming the Sentinel send-off tournament champions. Two major organizations, two final major Halo 5 tournaments. While we can't wait to see what the competitive future brings with Halo Infinite, there will still be plenty of community tournaments to hold us over till launch. Josh, what was the community up to over the month of May? We had a lot of community tournaments that happened over the month of May, Will. The GT Halo Spring Fling. Every mainline Halo title in one tournament. Anything could happen. Anyone could win. It was a back-and-forth battle, but it was the Northwest Pirate Squad of Poseidon, Starkey Brownie, North Snipes, and Rugrats who took the first-place finish. The DJ Blue PDX Griffball Summer Series presented by DreamHack and powered by PlayGriffball.com for Halo Reach. First came Halo 4, and now comes Halo Reach. The original's roster of Nuki, Divin, Galvin, and Wrecking Nerds came out on top, solidifying their namesake. 
the blue team tournaments rainbow road for halo ce it simply doesn't matter if the gameplay styles drastically change king nick will find a way to win no matter what that's right king nick is not only the halo reach ffa champ but is now crowned the halo ce champ as well don't worry though he doesn't get two tickets to the infinite grand finals instead that second ticket goes to the ce runner-up who in this case is lgd hellboy the Europa Halo Spring Series 4v4. Hey, remember during the Halo 5 Pro Series where it was the French squad and cartel who absolutely dominated everyone else week after week? Yeah, you do? Well, what about the Europa Halo Spring Series 2v2 where even the split in half Cartel 2's roster proceeded to do the exact same thing? All right, fine, you remember both of those. Bet you can't guess who took this championship, can you? Ha! Nope. Wait, yeah, it, it was Cartel. The Louis V. Titans Money Tuesday Invitational. They put on their first ever open 2v2 tournament, and now LVT Productions are back to doing something a little different. A 2v2 Invitational tournament where the winners would be invited to compete in the Team Envy 2v2 Invitational. It was the duo of Boo Dubu and Septify to solidify their win and their invitation to the Envy tournament, where, as we've learned earlier, unfortunately took fourth place. Did we mention how damn good Renegade is in 2v2s? And the Kellogg's $25,000 Halo 5 Esports Arena Tournament Finals. While we believe that FFA is and always will be FFA, this isn't the first time that FFA qualifiers culminated in 1v1 tournament. <coughs> Halo 4 Global Championship. <coughs> the man won a Halo 5 World Championship on Splice. He's won multiple Money Tuesday titles alongside Bound, and he now claims the title of 1v1 champion. That's right. It was Renegade, or really, Renegade, who came out on top and took his $10,000 prize. That's all I've got for the community highlights that happened over the month of May. Will, let the listeners know what they have to look forward to in the month of June. All right. Coming up in June, we have the Esports Arena Halo 5 Weekly Tournaments. Even though the FFA and the 1v1 action has concluded, the weekly 4v4s continue. Tune in every Sunday over at twitch.tv slash esportsarena and see some incredible talent compete. We also have the SWAT Nation calm before the storm. SWAT Nation is getting in on the Halo 5 finale train as well, and what better way than with a traditional 4v4 SWAT tournament. The action takes place on June 12th, and the headshots will be bountiful. We have DJ Blue PDX Griffball Summer Series presented by DreamHack and powered by PlayGriffball.com. It's going to be Halo 3. The drafts never end, and this time it is for the fan favorite and original implementation of the game type. Halo 3 returns to the Griffball spotlight, and don't worry, there will be plenty of explosions to go around. Only one squad can come out on top, and the victors will be decided on June 26th. We have Blue Team Tournament's Rainbow Road Halo 2. Continuing in timeline order, Halo 2 is next up in the Blue Team Tournament FFA series. Will King Nick reign supreme again, or will someone else finally be able to dethrone him? There's only one way to find out, and that is towards the end of the month. There's your glimpse into the competitive Halo action coming your way over the month of June. Josh, back to you to close it out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this edition of Inside HCS for May. If you're interested in finding out more about these tournaments or anything else in the competitive Halo space, please check out HCS Pro Talk on all the socials, YouTube, Twitch, and anywhere you happen to find your podcasts. Podcast Evolve Crew, take it away. Thank you, Josh and Will. You guys can watch the show live at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central on twitch.tv forward slash HCS Pro Talk. And you can follow them on YouTube or your favorite podcast service of choice. Well, what's a good podcast service of choice these days? I use Pocket Casts. What does everyone else use? I use the Google one. I just use iTunes, yeah. I gave up on iTunes because it uh, kept forgetting where I was on episodes. It was very frustrating. I do want to shout, I forgot to mention that they record on Monday nights, so that's might be wrong that 1 p.m eastern 12 p.m now because they just recently changed so just follow their stuff on twitch and get the notification on when they come back yep you can follow them there and you can follow them on twitter it's probably like 7 p.m central or something and you will get everything that's all of our digest stuff we are currently up to date until the big live live event and then yay we will see if our schedule 
survives or gets set on fire and made new? No, our schedule will survive. It will just be tweaked and 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 laid out uh, afterwards. By the end of June, when we have our staff meeting afterwards, oof, it's been a while since we have a staff meeting. Oh, fuck. No, those are like 10 hours long. We're such a well-oiled machine. It's like we, it, it's great because we had we had a quarter one staff meeting, and it was so good we didn't need to have a quarter two. I know we're so talented. Quarter one was like five hours though. It was a long time. I I had to do it like in a parking lot at work. <laughs> That's what I did too. I was walking around in the parking lot at my work. But they're necessary so we can produce this awesome show. All of these shows because we have a shit ton of shows with nine people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of mouths to feed. It's basically the podcast equivalent of herding cats. That's how it all goes. Occasionally, we jam everyone in the one room and go, sit the fuck down, we need to talk. And then we all scurry off again. Like cockroaches. But it's going really well so far. Yeah, yeah, we're really good. We're, We're amazing. We're approaching seven years. I don't know if you guys knew that. Don't tell me that. And I, I never even mentioned this. By the time this episode comes out, it'll be like a week before our seventh year and our birthday. The first magical bungee number seven. Yeah, and if you're a patron, you're gonna you're gonna be getting a a birthday card from us. It wasn't supposed to go this far. What happened? They kept releasing books, Krista. They just won't stop. Yeah. <laughs> now we have responsibility and shit. What the fuck happened? When infinite starts to die down, that's when we'll that's when we'll throw in the towel. All right, let's just give it like another five or six years. Okay, perfect, perfect. We need to turn twenty. The podcast needs to turn twenty before we can stop. Because Halo's God, already God, I'm gonna be like forty. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, take us home, Krista. Thank you for joining us. Like we mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode to all of our shows on our website, HalopodcastEvolved.com. Or you can search for their unique podcast feed wherever podcasts are served. If you want to listen to everything all in one feed, follow Halo Podcast Evolved on your favorite podcast servers and leave a review. Once again, another special shout out to our patrons for supporting this show and making all of this possible. Head to patreon.com slash Halo Podcast Evolved to learn more. We love you, patrons. Thank you guys so much. And, of course, if you want to leave us a voicemail about this episode or previous episode or anything Halo-related, you can give us a call at 205-EVOLVED. That is 205-386-5833. And with that, I have been your host, Krista. And until next time, Evolve! 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 Yeah, that's fine. Uh, We should start the show. Yeah, we should start the show. Welcome, Spartans, to... (laughs) Fucking hell, (laughs) Orin. Jesus fucking Christ. I was so ready. You you ruined my groove. I'm going to throw you out of the castle. Oh, what a good movie. Just like in that movie.